Welcome back everybody to the Wandering Samurai Study in which we review and analyze every single act told in Ryoni Kenshin and today's act is Act 46 Extra Sunosuke and Ishiki Paintings Part 2. So at the end of the last video I mentioned that this was going to be the finale to this extra uh, Sunosuke story. I had it in my head for whatever reason that this was the end of Volume 6 and that it was only a two part storyline <laughs> I, I was off. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I was off and yeah, no, this is actually the middle section and we still have one more and I don't even want to say that this is the end of volume six because I'm not even certain anymore, <laughs> although I'm pretty sure I am. Anyway, something that I want to point out before we get into the chapter summary review is this little continuation of the last act with Kaoru and Kenshin where uh, Kaoru and Kenshin followed Tsunosuke to Katsu's house. Uh, to make sure that he's okay and Sunosuke getting back from uh, Katsu's place and going to the dojo the next day and the two of them <laughs> pretending that uh, they had no idea that Katsu is a former friend of Sunosuke or that they're acquainted that they know each other and being so obvious about it like it's them overacting to try and pretend that they had no idea I think it's a it's a good continuation of the previous act and I think it's really good here uh, it's, a, it's a good joke in itself, but also I think that it just really shows us the uh, dynamic that they have, that these people <laughs> are so ingrained in each other's lives that they uh, follow each other um, and th that it's a, it's a running thing uh, going through this series between uh, the characters where we've already seen this once before where they followed Yahiko to the Akabeko to see what he was up to, what he was being so secretive about. And then now we have Kaoru and Kenshin doing it for Sonosuke. And I guess Sonosuke knowing this about them that he immediately was able to tell uh, that they uh, spied on him. It's a great runner. I think that it just really shows that they have a family dynamic. And without further ado, let's get into the chapter summary review. Sonosuke and Katsu continue their conversation about Katsu's plan to take down the Meiji government. He's been slowly crafting bombs and posing as an artist to avoid detection. Because of what the Seki Hotai means to Sonosuke, he agrees to join Katsu on his quest to take down the Meiji government, one government building at a time. On the night of their planned attack, Katsu and Sonosuke host a party for the Kenshingumi at the dojo as a last hurrah for Sonosuke and his friends that he's leaving behind. The two men leave once everyone is asleep, but little do they realize that Kenshin is still awake, listening in on them. So the first thing that I want to talk about is Sonosuke renting the dojo, coming to Kaoru and asking that he could use the dojo for a party that he wants to host for everybody, and he uses it as a guise for him reconnecting with a Katsu that he wants to use it as <laughs> as a way for Katsu to be introduced to the Kenshin uh, Gumi to the Kenshin group and it's a facade what it really is is his last hurrah with the group that he is planning on abandoning to uh, become an outlaw and but what I really want to note about it is Sonosuke approaching Kaoru and asking if he could rent the dojo for the night Kaoru immediately assuming, ready to jump down Sonosuke's throat, that she would also be providing the money to uh, host the party and ready to tell him no. And uh, Sonosuke telling her that no, it's uh, he, he'll find the money somehow. I think that this just says so much about the relationship that Sonosuke and Kaoru have. It, it's very evident that Sonosuke is seen by Kaoru as a mooch. That, that's really all he's good at is just uh, kind of loitering around and taking anything that uh, is there at the dojo for himself, uh, helping himself. Uh, I mean, he's very, very clearly upfront about being a freeloader these days. But uh, to actually see how the other characters see him, I guess it kind of just emphasizes on that whole freeloader thing. That he's very self-aware about being a freeloader and it bothers everyone else. That uh, Kaoru is not the type... I mean, she allows it to happen, but she's also trying not to let it happen. That It's clearly something that bugs her. It kind of makes me wonder how these two characters would get along if um if Kenshin wasn't the the glue that held them together because I don't really see them being the type of people that would hang out if Kenshin wasn't around. 
I don't know, but I think that that would be kind of a fun, like, little bonus act some or something, you know, where we see Sanosuke and Kaoru hanging out. <laughs> um, maybe trying to get a present for uh, Kenshin on Kenshin's birthday or something. I don't know. The next thing that I want to talk about is Yahiko drinking. It's a nice visual gag. I really enjoyed it. I think it really harkens back to Yahiko being a, a gag character throughout a lot of this narrative uh, early on. I don't know what the rules are in anime and manga when it comes to children drinking. I, uh, I've always just thought that maybe children drinking in anime is very strict, but it seems to get a pass when it comes to uh, manga because uh, Yahigo drinking, it's not the first time that I've seen it in manga. I see the characters in the manga of School Rumble always drinking and kind of like scratching my head like, oh, I thought that it was it was pretty strict of them uh, to, to display children drinking. Like I thought that that was something that was really frowned upon. But here we get it with uh, Yahiko. But apart from all of that, what I want to say about Yahiko is that um, Yahiko drinking, it's a nice visual uh, gag, as I mentioned, but it's also Yahiko <laughs> taking the opportunity to uh, jump in on the chance to drink. And wanting to uh, gulp uh, as much sake as he can because he wants to be seen as an adult. He wants to do adult things like everybody else. This is the reason why <laughs> uh, you just kind of see him like wanting to just take as much as he can. And you see characters like Tsubame who is a little bit more reserved, a little bit more shy. Uncertain if she wants to actually uh, drink the sake. And then of course Yahiko being too young to actually... Uh, hold his liquor and of course the visual gag of him just gulping it down showcasing us that yes he is a child that is too young to hold his liquor otherwise he would uh, you know pace himself it's great I, I like it for the for the comedic effect but I also like what it kind of means in uh, the role that he plays in this family let's go ahead and wrap up the video by talking about Sonosuke Sonosuke really is the heart of this act this whole story is focused around Sonosuke and it's more so about the feelings that he's uh, dealing with the conflict that he's uh He's uh, enduring or I guess going through uh, in this this three chapter act where he wants to uh, he, he's living his carefree life. He's moved on from the uh, the past and yet a person from his past has come into it and he is uh, seeing what it's like to see somebody that went through the same thing as him but hasn't yet let go of it. Say that Sonosuke had never met Kenshin and he instead met Katsu prior to meeting uh, Kenshin and letting go of the past. Easily, the two of them could team up and go for this plan unapologetically. They would think that this is the right thing to do. But now that he's met Kenshin and now that he's a little bit more aware of the state of the world and the, the mission that Kenshin has and knowing things about like the Seinen Wars and, and uh, knowing how actually like efficient I guess the Meiji government is trying to to be he's not certain about it he's going along with it though only because it's his friend from the past and he sees him uh, suffering and he thinks that being supportive is the right thing to do but he's not enjoying it and this is the reason that he decides that he wants to throw a party for his friends because he wants to uh, thank them for everything that he's given them because he's leaving them and he wants to give them a last hurrah. He wants to have one last enjoyable night with uh, the friends that he's made. And you can tell that he's very guilty about it because uh, when he leaves, he says um, he apologizes to the group. that They don't hear him. They're sleeping, obviously. But he tells Kenshin, assuming that Kenshin's also asleep, that the next time that they meet, that he's going to be an outlaw and that he's already expecting Kenshin to swing his sword at him and he knows that that is what's going to happen and that he deserves it for the decisions that he's making now and I love this I love the inner turmoil that Sonosuke is uh, dealing with in this act and with that we have wrapped up act 45 of Rurouni Kenshin what did you guys think let me know down below if you like this video and you want to see more then consider subscribing to the channel leave a thumbs up and comment down below what did you guys think of Sonosuke's inner turmoil? What did you guys think of the 
visual gags that we have here. Like, it's a pretty serious story. We have, like, bombs and grenades and uh, and a plot to take the government down. But then we also have visual gags with uh, Yahiko and Kaoru and, and, um, and Kenshin. And it's a good mixture, I felt. But let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys all in the, the next act. <laughs> Bye, ciao. Hello. Welcome back everybody to the Wandering Samurai Study, which we review and analyze every single act told in Ruin and Ken- <clears throat>